Diary of Fate. Fate plays no favorite. It could happen to you. Book 701, page 327. Yes, here it is. The life record of Janice Bennett. A record in which you, Janice, although young and attractive, have left disappointment, heartache, and anger in your wake. For regardless of what it meant to others, you always took the easy way out for yourself. And now, for a brief moment, I, fate, look ahead to an instant of crisis in your life. But, but Philip, why have you stopped? We're at the head of the stairs, Aunt Claire. Well, what of it? Philip, where's your arm? Philip, don't you hear me? Philip, Philip, where are you? Right here, Aunt Claire. Philip! <laughs> fate intervene, and because of a little thing, a broken pair of glasses, she soon will be condemned to death. But mark well the words, you who listen, for fate is not ruthless, not without purpose. In a moment, I will read again from the Diary of Fate. In a moment, we'll unfold our story. But first, here is our announcer. Yes, Janice Bennett will find, as others have found, that no mortal can compute the final result of little things. For they are the tools with which I work. Remember, Janice, how it all started? You stood near the rail of an ocean liner, carrying you from Cape Town, South Africa, to New York. When a little thing happened, a trivial thing destined to change the whole pattern of your life. Uh, pardon me, miss, but I believe this is yours. What? Oh... Oh, were you speaking to me? Uh, yes, yes, your, your handkerchief. It, it almost fell overboard. Here you are. Oh, why, why thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure, I assure you. <laughs> we, we sound just like, like something out of the gay 90s. Well, uh, how do you mean? Oh, pretty girl drops handkerchief. Obliging fellow picks it up and... And I'm much too modern to pull an old trick like that. Believe me, I didn't realize I dropped it. Oh, well... Accident or not, it was still very effective. You see, if you hadn't dropped it, I'd never have met you and learned your name. All right, you win. I'm Janice. And I'm Philip Kirby. Now we're not strangers anymore. No, no. Matter of fact, I, I think we're going to be friends. Very close friends. Yes, Janice, it was a little thing. A handkerchief that you really had dropped by accident. So common a thing that you joked about it. And because of that, you met the handsome, suave Philip Kirby, traveling to Boston with his invalid sister. Before he left, he made an appointment with you for cocktail. Two hours later, in the ship's lounge, you and Philip were well on your way to a warm friendship. And all I have to say is I'm... I'm sorry you didn't drop that handkerchief four days ago. So am I. It's been a very dull voice. Until today. You're right. My sister Marion never leaves the stateroom, you know, so traveling with her is pretty tiresome. By the way, Janice, why did you leave Cape Town? Oh, just got tired of it. Hmm. You have a family in New York? No, I'm quite alone in the world. Well, relatives do come in handy now and again. Especially relatives like Aunt Claire in Boston... You see, Aunt Claire has nothing but money. Lots and lots of it. And you like money, don't you, Philip? I love it, Janice. And what's more, I intend to have it. 
Well, I'd better go look in on Marion for a while, poor girl. Uh, will you excuse me? Of course, Philip. And will you meet me later on deck, say at uh, 8 o'clock? I'd love to. And please, Philip, don't be late. I'll be waiting. Was your sister all right, Philip? She's asleep now. It's a wonderful night, Janice. Mm -hmm. Since I found you, everything's changed. You're beautiful. Janice? Yes, Philip? Janice, I... Oh, Philip. Janice, darling, I... I'm falling in love with you. Yes, Janice. Philip Kirby was falling in love with you. Now the path you would follow is clear. For Philip seemed to be everything you desired in a man. And he had money. You arranged to meet him the following evening. But early next morning, when you dropped into the purser's office on casual business, another little thing happened. Are you the purser? Uh, yes, I am. May I help you? Well, thank you. I'm in stateroom A-12, and I'm having a little trouble oh, with... Look out, look out, oh. Mr. Todd. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. How clumsy. Here, let me help you pick them up. It's perfectly all right, miss. Oh, but I insist it was my... Is something wrong? Why, why this card says, Mr. Philip Kirby and wife. <laughs> Stared at the card in disbelief. Philip's invalid sister, Marion, was really his wife. All afternoon you brooded. But as evening approached, you thought again of Philip's handsome face, his kisses, and his money. Finally, as the hour of your meeting arrived, you went to join him. Janice, I've missed you today. All day long, I could think of nothing else but you. Oh, please, Philip. Life is complicated enough without but your... But life can be very simple, Tom. Good living to share with the right woman. That's all I ask. Well, Aunt Claire's money will supply the good living. And you, Janice, are the right woman. I'm positive of that. There's only one loophole in that scheme of things, Philip. The present, Mr. Philip Kirby, might object. Good night. What? But, but Janice. Janice, wait. Janice, come back here. Janice. Go away, Philip. Janice, you've got to listen to me. Open the door. Please, Janice. I don't know how you found out about Mary and Janice, but it doesn't matter. I was going to tell you myself. But there's one thing you must understand. I meant every word I said to you. And what about her? All right. I'll tell you the whole thing. Frankly, Marion means nothing to me. I don't love her. Never have. She's been my wife only a few weeks, and I married her for the sole purpose of getting close to her Aunt Claire's fortune. How do I know Aunt Claire isn't just a myth, too? Mm -hmm. She's real enough, all right. She's an old woman, been blind for years. And she lives alone now with nothing but her pets, her memories, and her money. And Marion is going to inherit that money? Yes. Yeah. She's Aunt Claire's only near relative. That's why I married her. Don't you understand? Strangely enough, I do. We're really two of a kind, you and I. I know. Uh, Janice, I, I need you. I need you. I, I want you near me. But you want to need Aunt Claire's money just as badly. It's rather ironic, isn't it? Ironic? <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Why, Aunt Claire has never even seen Mary. And yet Marion will receive her entire fortune. You say Aunt Claire is blocked. And she's never seen Mary? Mm -hmm. That's right. But, Janice, don't you see, everything could be so perfect if only... Oh, uh, what's the use of daydreaming? Daydreaming can do wonders, sir. It simulates the imagination. What are you talking about? Philip, if you really love me, then it's a matter of our two lives against Marion's one. Yes, Janice. Path you had chosen led you to a decision for murder. And you found an eager accomplice in the infatuated Philip. Far into the night, you outlined your plan. When you
you met again the following afternoon, the heavy fog that enshrouded the decks made a fitting background to the dark evil in your mind. Positive. Marion's parents died in Cape Town. She has no close friends or relatives in Boston except Annie Clay. And she's blind. Well, I've already written my suicide note. I'll leave it on the dresser in my cabin. Good. Now, when it gets dark, I'll take care of Mary. Oh. That will be simple. Then I'll wait for your signal. It may be late before the dresser clears. That doesn't matter. Once we've gotten rid of Marion, you will be Aunt Claire's niece and ever. And, and a chance will have committed suicide. Can't be over again. Oh, Philip. Philip, I... Now, now, steady. Steady, Janice. Nothing can go wrong, you hear? I'll be waiting for you, Siggy. Listen. Yes, yes. You keep a lookout. I'll be out in it. All right. But hurry. Over here, Philip. All right. There. <clears throat> well, it's done, Janice. It's over. Now you get back in the cabin. And hurry, hurry. Because of a little thing, because of a handkerchief and a spilled index file, you chose a path of least resistance, now a path from which there was no turning back. Soon, Janet Bennett, I will read again from your record in The Diary of Faith. We'll continue our story of Janet Bennett in just a moment. Now, here is our announcer. Because of a carelessly dropped handkerchief, you had met Philip Kirby. And now, a week later, as you and Philip left the ship and boarded a train bound for Boston and Aunt Claire, there was no thought of remorse. Now there was only what you thought to be the attractive future. See, although Marion often corresponded with her dear Aunt Claire, she never saw her. Uh, what about pictures? Hmm, there aren't any. Marion was hardly photogenic. Actually, she dreaded the sight of the camera. Well, that helps. Hmm. Now, uh, Philip, are there any old servants or close friends I should know about? Hmm, not a one. Aunt Claire's friends are all in the animal kingdom. <laughs> Cats, dogs, canaries, that sort of thing. And the servants, well, they just about change with the season. So don't worry, my dear. If we watch our steps, we can't fail. When Aunt Claire talks of her pet cats or her faithful dog, we'll be intensely interested. And when she speaks of her late husband, the colonel, we'll be completely absorbed. Did the colonel ever see Marion? Uh, frequent. He was a regular army man, you know. And in 1939 was military attaché in South Africa. That was before I met Mary. I know a little about him. And he was killed in the war, right? Well, officially, he's still listed as missing in action, but uh, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that he's dead. Except, of course, Aunt Claire. See, she cherishes the illusion that one day the colonel shall return. But what if he's right, sir? He'd know I'm not marrying him. Don't be absurd. The chances of Janice are a million to one that the colonel is dead. Now, you'll have to admit that those are pretty good odds. Yes, Philip, they are. At those odds, it's hardly a gamble at all. 
Hardly. Well, this must be it. One fourteen grand. Aunt Claire's cozy little mansion. Good afternoon. I'm Marion Kirby, Mrs. Fuller's niece. Oh, please come in, Mrs. Kirby. Mrs. Fuller's been expecting you, Mr. Kirby, this morning. May I take the rest? Thank you. I hope the excitement of our arrival hasn't upset Mrs. Fuller. Oh, no, sir, it hasn't. Mrs. Fuller's only concerned with her pets, and uh, then, of course, there's her constant nightmare. Nightmare? Uh, what do you mean? But your aunt awakens almost every night and cries out that Carl has come back. Now that she's happy, uh, uh, she's not bad, I think she's talking. I'll tell Mrs. Fuller you've arrived. Nightmare, sister. Nightmare's about Carl's return. Carl! That's the colonel, sister. Philip. You don't think that... That Aunt Claire's dreams are an old... <laughs> well, you think the colonel's going to pop in here momentarily? No, my... But neither do I think that your constant fretting over the matter is very much help. Remember, Marion, we've got to play this cleverly. Now, come on. It's time to meet Aunt Claire. All right, Philip. I'm ready. I'm anxious to meet More tea, Aunt Claire? Oh, thank you. Taking tea with company's fun. Of course, I'm never really alone. I always have my little friend. Raj, am I blue ribbon signing? Perkin, Perkin, my canary. But then again, it's not quite like having actual people like you, too. Nor is it like having Carl here by my side. You miss him terribly, don't you, Aunt Claire? Yes, my dear, I do. Carl was more than just good company. And frankly, I can't get around very well without him. Oh, I do hope he returns before long. I'm not going to live forever, you know. Come now, enough of that sort of talk. You years ahead, Aunt Claire. Too, if I'm lucky. And that reminds me. Uh, Philip, I'm too old to watch my business interests. And with Carl gone, getting around is a bothersome problem. So I'd like you and Marion to look after my investment. Why, Aunt Claire, Philip, you're an absolute wizard in the world of finance. Well, that's good news. I'm glad to hear that you're so successful, Philip. I'm very glad. Well, three o'clock already. Uh, Philip, uh, will you help me downstairs? It's time to feed Roger. It's a pleasure, Aunt Claire. Thank you. I detest being bothersome. Well, maybe Carl will be back soon. I hope so, Aunt Claire. I certainly hope so. Yes, Janice. Brazenly, you pretended to hope for Carl's return. But even as you smiled and spoke the comforting words, a sudden panic surged through you at the thought of your mock wish being realized. And hours later, as you and Philip sat alone in the library, possibility of Carl's return pressed heavily on your mind. But, Philip, they never found the body. There's no proof he's actually dead. Why, for all we know... Stop it, Janice. Colonel Fuller was in a plane that crashed in Germany and burned to nothing. That was in the winter of 1942. Janice, he's as dead as... It... It's been since the past time. Well, good evening, Aunt Claire. Hello, Aunt Claire. Good evening, children. That will be all, Vincent. You can call about Carl now, if you will. Very well, ma'am. Call? Call call about Carl? Yes. I check with the authorities at least once a day. Never can tell just when you show up, you know. What? You check? With the authorities once a day? Oh, very sensible thing to do. Well, I'm going to my room in a moment. But first, I want to tell you of a decision I've made. A decision? About what? Well, as you know, Marion... You are my sole heir, and as such, you inherit all my worldly possessions. But after our chat this afternoon, I realized that Philip was more than just a fair provider. Oh, what do you mean, Aunt Claire? What are you getting at? Well, now that there's no need to worry about you two, I can at last do something I've long dreamed of. Tomorrow, I'm going to change my wish. Hey, but how... 
in memory of Carl. I'm going to leave all my money to the society for the prevention of cruelty to animals. For a moment, Janice, you were stunned. And you stared vacantly at Philip as the old woman hobbled from the room. A cane tapping for clearance. Then the full effect of her words crashed into your mind. And you realized that Claire Fuller had to be stopped. Yes, Janice, no matter what the cost, she had to be kept from changing her will. Bella, did you hear? Did you? What are we going to do? How can we stop it? Only one thing will stop Aunt Claire now, and that's her death, Janice. Her accidental death. You saw there was no alternative, Janice. You had already murdered once. Now, with everything you both wanted, almost within reach, another life was unimportant. But an hour later, as you plotted with Philip, I fate again intervened. And another little thing happened. Philip, are you sure? Are you certain that nothing can go wrong? I'm positive, Janice. Now calm down. The cook has already left, and once I get Benson out of the house, the rest will be easy. In some way, we'll get Aunt Claire to the head of the stairs, and then... And it's all over. Exactly. Of course, we'll call for an ambulance, but... Philip, uh... your glass is what house? Oh, oh. I found it. I've broken a limb. I... Wait a minute. This will do the trick very nice. Yes. Uh, Benson. Oh, Benson, will you come in here a moment, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there something I can do for you, sir? Uh, yes, there is, Benson. I've, I've broken the right lens of my reading glasses. I'm at a complete loss without them. I, I wonder if you'd happen to know of an optician who stays open and do Why, yes, sir, I do. Luckily, I kept the copy of my prescription. Just got to the last a month ago. Mm. Oh, here it is. Thank you, Benson. Quite all right. Right. Well, that certainly was a lucky break. Yes. And now, my dear, in a matter of minutes, it will all be yours. Yes, Philip? Yes, who's there? It's me, Aunt Claire. We'd like you to join us in the library. It's uh, about your decision to change your will, Aunt Claire. Well, my mind's made up about that, but... Uh, and nobody wants to change it. No. You see, Marion and I have decided to make a donation ourselves, and, well, we'd like your advice. Oh. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And in that case, what are we waiting for? Philip, give me your arm. Mm -hmm. Aunt Claire, uh, have you talked to anyone of this yet? About changing your will, I mean... No, not to a soul. I'm not the kind to talk before I act. Uh, Philip, why have you stopped? We're at the head of the stairs, Aunt Claire. Well, what of it? Philip, where's your arm? Philip, don't you hear me? Philip, where are you? Right here. Philip! Ah! <laughs> Janice, the woman you called Aunt Claire was dead. But even as you stared at her lifeless body, your thought turned to the wealth that would soon be yours. But soon I will write again under your name in the Diary of Fate. And now, before the strange conclusion to our story of the Janice Bennett entry, here is our announcer. Yes, Janice Bennett. A moment Claire Fuller died, you had everything you wanted in life. And as you stood in the study and watched Philip calmly tell a policeman how Aunt Claire had accidentally fallen to her death, 
the hysteria that had surged through you during the awful moment of murder slowly subsided. But then Vincent entered the room. Oh, Mr. Kirby, I don't know what to say. This accident, it, it, it's awful. All right, who's this? Uh, this is Vincent, officer. Mrs. Fuller's butler. Huh? It's a terrible thing, Vincent. Aunt Claire was such a fine woman. Yes, you should think that all this time I've been rushing home with good news for her. With wonderful news for her. Uh, good news? What do you mean, Vincent? Good news about what? About Carl. He's back. What? What are you saying, man? No, he's coming. Yes, he's out in the hall. Don't. I'll get him. I'll get him for you. No, uh, no, don't. Don't. He'll know I'm not married. He'll know what we've done. Dennis. Dennis. Shut up. Dennis. I thought your wife's name was Marion. Kirby? I think it... Oh, stop it, Philip. What's the use? Carl knows. We lost it. You understand we lost... Hey, 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 wait a minute. I want to know who this Carl is. Come on, calm down, Mrs. Kirby. Come on, calm down now. Calm down? <laughs> well, I'll tell you who Carl is. He's the one man in the whole world who could ruin everything for us. Huh? He's the only man who knows that I'm not Marion Kirby. That I'm an imposter. A murderer. What? I don't understand, ma'am. What do you mean you don't understand? Well, Mr. Kirby sent me to an optician to get his glasses repaired. Yes? The only one I knew of was right next door to the SPCA. So while I was waiting for the glasses, I checked, and uh, that's where I found Carl. You see, Carl is a dog. Mrs. Fuller's seeing eye dog. Yes, Janet Bennett. It never occurred to you that Carl could be a seeing-eye dog. In panic, you revealed your guilt and condemned both Philip and yourself to death. And now it is time to close the book. Yes, I, fate, am but the instrument of a plan. And the myriad little things that happen are the tools with which I work. Heed well the moral, you who listen and remember. There is a page for you in the diary of fate. Included in the cast of our story were Herbert Lytton, Ginny Johnson, Gloria Gordon, Doug Young,